I recently got an email about a new AI tool called Rodin that can generate 3D models from images and it helped me to make this render. So let me show you how to use it. First you need to go into your website, link in the description. Now here in the website you can see other people's generations which you can download if you want. We have robots, hamburgers and pokemons. But today we're going to make our own. And you can do that by pressing on this plus icon and choosing an image from your files. Or if you don't have a specific image, you can just type what you want to make and Rodin will generate an image based off that prompt. But for this video, I'm going to use a concept art that I found on Pinterest. I recommend you try using images where the subject has a clean background and is in focus. Once you do that, it will take some time to analyze the image and then a new window will pop up with a preview of your model. Now here you can see this auto-generated prompt that you can change. For example, this guy included T-pose in his prompt. So although the image that he included isn't in a T-pose, the AI would still generate the model in a T-pose. There are also some other options that would help the AI better understand the image. Now, let's say that you're not happy with how it turned out. In that case, you can just press this redo button to make a new generation. There is also this history option that lets you go back to a specific model that you liked. Once you are happy with it, you can go ahead and confirm it by hovering over this button. You also have the option to choose your desired poly count from 3000 to 30,000. There is also this hyper checkbox which is good when you're dealing with super thin geometry like plants and leaves. For this model, I select 30,000 and press on confirm. Then it will generate your final model. Good thing to mention is that you can also mix two things with each other. For example, I can mix an octopus with a helicopter. Not sure why someone want to do that, but if you want to, you can. Here you can leave it as is, or you can texture it. You can also use this mesh editor to fix any problem on your mesh by sculpting. For texturing, you can use your original texture or you can use a totally different one. For example, in here we have Pikachu and let's say for whatever reason I wanted to have a wooden material. And I can do that by pressing on this plus icon and choosing an image. And as you can see, our Pikachu is now made out of wood. Back to our robot. When you hover your mouse on generate, it shows you two sliders. The first slider controls the amount of detail and the second one controls how close the texture is going to be compared to the image that you provided it. I like to set both of these to the max amount and then press on generate. Now as you can see, the model is textured and ready to go. You can also use these preview options like wireframe or even a tune shader if you want. Also, you can directly publish this into a sketch fab, or you can download it. For downloading, you have a couple of options, like a general base model, a high poly option, and you also have the ability to export this with LODs, which is pretty handy. Beside that, you have your everyday formats like OBJ and FBX. Then in the material section, you can choose between shaded and PBR as well as the quality of your textures. Now that you're happy with your settings, you can press on download. Once it's downloaded, unzip it and you'll see your model with the texture maps. Inside Blender, the way of setting up the materials is just like any other material. I also wanted to point out that alongside your everyday maps, you also have this texture underlying PBR map which has all of the other maps inside itself combined which is really useful for game developers who want to optimize their game now let me show you how i turn this thing into this first i added head for scale reference then i added a ground and gave it a soil material i then used a the hue saturation node to desaturate the material now it looks like moon i also went and masked anywhere that it made it light I wanted some stronger light beams coming from the headlights, so I used two cones and gave them a principal volume material with the emission color set to yellow. At the end, I added a volume box and rendered it. After rendering, 
I threw it inside Photoshop and did some post processing. First, I wanted to add some additional highlights to the edges by first selecting my robot and duplicating it. And then adding another layer, right clicking and creating a clipping mask. And then with a soft brush, I painted on the edges where there would be highlights. And as you can see, we're making some pretty nice highlights. But it's a little harsh, so I'm going to lower the opacity and set the blending mode to screen. As you can see, we clearly don't have a sky. So I went and added a sky from a pack that I downloaded a long time ago. We can also find some pretty nice free stuff on Unsplash. Then what you want to do is that you want to press Ctrl Shift E to merge all of these layers and then duplicate the layer and add a Gaussian blur to it. Then you want to go into blending options and mess around with these handles. This will give the render that dreamy look. After that, merge all the layers once again and add a camera raw filter. Then play around with the sliders, add some vignettes, grain, whatever you like. Now we want to have some chromatic aberration. So for that, go into filter tab, lens correction. Then press on custom and set one of these sliders to somewhere around 10 to 50 and the other one minus that number that you set. And then press on OK. Now we have just a little bit of chromatic aberration, which is all we need. Don't go overboard. Also, one thing to mention is that your camera raw filter should be above your lens correction. And that was all the post-processing. Sadly, this is not a post-processing tutorial, so I couldn't get into more details. But if you want more details, I have a video dedicated to post-processing that you can watch. Also, make sure to check out Rodin. The folks behind it were absolutely awesome. If you have any questions, make sure to check out their Discord. And with that, thanks for watching. Bye. See ya.